Anthony first became interested in real estate when he witnessed his friend's father get a salesperson's license and begin making money right away. He recalls saying to himself, if he can do it, why can't I? And that's exactly what he did. At the age of 19, he enrolled in a real estate school and began attending classes. Anthony tells a story often about what he was thinking while he was sitting in the classroom. To him, it made no sense that the instructor of the school was talking about how much money can be made in real estate, and yet he was not working in real estate himself. Instead, he was teaching a class. So he asked the instructor about this. The instructor told him that he wasn't just the instructor, but that he owned the school. And suddenly it made sense to Anthony. He quickly did the math, multiplied the number of students by the price of the course, and factored in how many courses per year were taught, and he saw the potential. One day I'm going to open a real estate office, buy a bunch of buildings, start a construction company, and renovate the buildings, open a real estate school, recruit all my friends and family to come work for me, and become a success story. The first step was getting his real estate license, which he did. The second was finding a broker he could work for. Once licensed, he went to work for the biggest company in Brooklyn. There he learned the business and started to love it. About a year later, he left and started looking for a sponsoring broker in the prestigious neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights. So he spoke to every broker that would listen and was turned down time and time again. He was looked at as being too young and inexperienced for the highly competitive real estate world of Brooklyn Heights. He finally stumbled upon a raggedy old office on the second floor where he walked in and an old man told him two things, that he wasn't hiring and that everyone was suing him. Despite what appeared to be a negative start, Anthony's strong desire to get his foot in the door in that neighborhood drove him to convince the old man to sponsor him, which he did with one condition. He told Anthony, here's the deal, it's 50-50, but when I say 50%, I mean 50% of everything, 50% of the commission and 50% of the bills. Anthony took the deal. He started working in Brooklyn Heights and quickly became one of the busiest agents in the area. He went on to assemble a group of nine agents to work for the company. The broker eventually showed his true colors and put stop payments on the agent's commission checks. Eventually they all left and he did the same to Anthony, which forced him to leave and contemplate his future. Anthony now found himself debating on whether to work for another firm or to take the advice his mother had given him, which was to open his own office. He took his mother's advice and started looking for spaces. Initially he was going to rent a space in Brooklyn Heights, but his mother again wisely advised him to stop looking for commercial spaces to lease. She told him that the money he would be spending for rent he could easily buy a building in another neighborhood. So he started looking for buildings and one day while driving home he stopped at a red light. Looked over to his right and saw a man posting a for sale sign on a property on 4th Avenue and 21st Street. Anthony, doing what all good real estate brokers should do, got out of his car and spoke to the guy who happened to be the owner and got the listing. After touring the property, he saw the potential and despite it being located in an area that was a bit further out than he wanted to be, he thought it could work well for him both as an investment property and for the purpose of setting up an office on the ground level commercial space. The building needed a lot of work and because he could not afford to hire expensive contractors, he learned construction by hiring day laborers and watching them and working alongside them. He found himself being a real estate agent by day and contractor by night. But all that hard work would soon pay off. Little did he know that this would be the future home of one of the most successful rental companies in New York City. Up next, Anthony gets Rapid Realty up and running and months later suffers a dramatic setback that would force most people to throw in the towel. Anthony's resilience pushes him to bounce back and he expands his real estate portfolio. He grows the company, then goes on a media blitz and puts Rapid on the map. 